By the end of this video, you'll know how to install and set up a GitLab runner, whether it's for an instance, group or project. Plus, you'll learn how to tweak the settings to run jobs in parallel and keep your pipelines running smoothly, even across multiple projects. Before we dive into the setup and configuration, let's take a moment to understand what GitLab runners are and why they're essential for CI-CD pipelines. A GitLab runner, formerly known as GitLab Worker until 2015, is an application used to execute jobs in a GitLab pipeline. It's the engine that processes your pipeline instructions, whether you're building, testing, deploying, or performing other automated tasks. Runners are lightweight, versatile, and can be deployed in various environments, making them the backbone of GitLab CI CD workflows. There are three main types of GitLab runners instance runners, group runners, and project runners. The instance runners are available to all projects within a GitLab instance. The group runners are specific to a group of projects, and project runners are exclusive to one or more specific projects. Okay, now that we've got the basics covered, let's fire up our setup and get these runners up and running. All right, this is the GitLab instance we configured before. If you haven't watched that yet, check the description below to ensure you have your own self-hosted GitLab instance set up before continuing. Now, the first step is to go to the admin area. From there, navigate to CICD and then to runners. As you can see, I already have a few runners here. However, to make this process relatable for you, assuming you're starting fresh without any runners, I'll delete all of these so we're starting from the same point. Now you'll see a similar screen. To get started, you'll need to install the GitLab runner on your server. To do this, click on the three dots in the top right corner and select Show Runner Installation and Registration Instructions. Let's follow the steps for the Linux environment. The first command downloads the GitLab runner binary for your system. I already have the runner installed on my server, so your output will be different. The second command gives the binary the necessary execution permissions. Then, the GitLab runner requires its own user and home directory, which this command creates. Finally, you install and start the runner using the provided start command. To confirm everything is working, use the GitLab runner status command to check the runner's status. Now that the runner is started, let's head back to the GitLab instance. The next step is registering a runner. You'll see a warning that the registration token is deprecated, but the command still works for now. Just paste the command, press enter for the GitLab instance URL since it's already set up, and do the same for the registration token. I'll include a description to help keep track because I plan to add multiple runners later. No tags will be added to this runner for now. I'll set Docker as the executor. For the default image, I'll use the example provided, Ruby 2.7. It doesn't matter here since our pipelines will have specific base images defined for each job, Let's go back to the GitLab instance. If we refresh the runners page, you'll see the newly registered runner appear here. This runner is now available for use in any project or group within this instance directly. Now, let's register a runner using the authentication token instead of the deprecated registration token, like we did for the first one. On the same runners page, click the new instance runner button. You can add any tag you want, but I'll use instance and Docker. Add a short description, then click Create Runner. Next, select the operating system for this runner. I'll choose Linux, as that's what I'm using. And then simply copy this command, run it on the server, and the runner will be registered. Fill in the details just like we did for the first runner. Then, let's check back in the GitLab instance. Refresh the runner's page, and you'll see that the newly created runner is now active and ready to work. This runner functions just like the one we created earlier, but the key difference is that it uses the authentication token instead of the registration token. Now let's create a group runner. A group runner is configured to run jobs only for a specific group within GitLab. To begin, go to the left-hand menu and navigate to Groups and create a new group. I'll name it Second Group and click on Create Group. Let's also quickly create a project within this group Make sure the newly create group is set at the project URL section and click on create project. Click on the group name in the top left corner, then navigate to build runners and click on new group runner. Fill in the information with some tags and a description, then click create runner. 
copy the provided command and run it on the server, filling in the details just like we did before. For the group runner to become active, it might take anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes, so don't worry if it doesn't work right away. Before running some jobs, let's create the last type of runner, a project runner. To do this, navigate to the first group and create a new blank project. Let's name it Testing Project Runner and click Create Project. Click on Settings, CICD, and then go to Runners. By default, the two instance runners we just created are listed here, but now we want to click on New Project Runner. Fill in the information with some tags and a description, then copy the provided command. Run it on the server, just like we did before. Let's check the GitLab instance. For this runner to come online, it usually takes a few minutes. Now let's take a quick look at all the runners we've set up. We have the instance runners, the first one registered with the registration token, and the second with the authentication token. Then we have the group runner, and finally the project runner. To see these runners in action, start by creating a new blank project. I'll give it a random name, calling it random, and then create a simple pipeline. For simplicity, only the build stage will be kept, as the purpose is to demonstrate the runners in action rather than the pipeline itself. The other stages will be removed, leaving only build and the changes will be committed. Let's check the pipelines page. As you can see, the first job is picked up by the registration token runner, which is the very first runner we created using the registration token. Let's trigger the pipeline again, and as you can see, this job is picked up by the same runner. Perfect. Now, it's time to make the pipeline a bit more complex. A test stage and a deploy stage will be added to simulate a more realistic workflow. The details of how pipelines work won't be covered here. That is in a separate video. This setup is intended to provide a clearer picture of how the runners handle multiple stages. The pipeline now consists of a build job, a test job which might take around 10 minutes, and a deploy job which takes one minute. Let's commit this change. The build stage finished immediately and the test stage will take 10 minutes because of the sleep command added to the job script. But what happens if another pipeline needs to run in a different project while this one is still running? Without any changes to the configuration, the new pipeline will remain in a pending state. 10 minutes might not seem like a big deal here, but in a real world scenario, where a team is working on multiple projects and making frequent commits, this can quickly become a bottleneck. To allow multiple jobs to run in parallel, the configuration needs to be updated. This can be done by modifying the configuration file located in etc. GitLab Runner. The first option to adjust is concurrent. It can be set to 2 or any higher number depending on the server's capacity. Additionally, having multiple runners hosted on multiple servers can help further increase the number of concurrent jobs. After restarting the pipeline, there are now two parallel jobs running from two different projects. Now, let's see how the group runner works. To demonstrate this, we'll go to the testing group project, which is part of the second group, head over to the pipeline editor, and here we'll make a small change. We'll add a tag to the pipeline configuration to specify the group runner. The tag corresponds to the one we set for the second group runner earlier. With that in place, commit the changes and head to the pipelines page. Perfect. This confirms that the group runner works as expected and processes jobs specifically for projects within its assigned group. Finally, let's explore the project runner. To demonstrate, navigate to the random project. Once there, go to the CICD settings and locate runners. Enable the project runner specifically for this project. Now, by clicking on the runner, the detailed information about it will be visible. Let's return to the pipelines page. One way to make this work easy is to add the tag from the project runner and commit the changes. Let's check the pipeline again. As you can see, the second job is picked up by the project specific runner, confirming that it's being used for this particular project. This runner is tied to the specific project, which means it won't be used for other projects unless explicitly configured. Before ending the video, I want to show you one more thing. If we go to CICD and then Jobs, you can see all the running jobs across the instance.
This provides an overview of all active jobs, whether they're from a group, project, or runner type. From this page, you can also cancel jobs or retry any failed ones. Thanks for watching. Check out my other videos and see you next time. Thank you